the Empowering Teaching Excellence podcast, powered by Academic and Instructional Services at Utah State University. This is the space where we dive into relevant topics of teaching and learning with college instructors, graduate students, and professional staff. Episode 8, Making Your 1000 Level Course a Place for Student Success, with Lauren Hunt and Ekaterina Arshavskaya. Hi, everyone. My name is Ekaterina Arshavskaya, and I'm associate professor here at USU in the World Languages and Cultures Department. And here we have with us Professor Lauren Hunt, and I will let her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Dr. Lauren Hunt. I'm assistant professor of horn and music history in the music department in the Kane College of the Arts here at USU. I've been at USU since fall 2019, so I'm in my third year here on campus. Okay, so welcome, uh, Lauren. And my first question to you would be just uh, why you are interested to share with us all this knowledge about making 1,000th one course a success. Well, um, I got interested in the topic of helping freshmen succeed in a couple different ways. Um, first of all, the course that I teach here, um, I actually used to teach two courses, but my load has recently been adjusted and I'm only teaching the one classroom class now. I also teach applied French horn lessons. Um, and so teaching these classroom classes was a pretty new experience for me. I think that's something that's shared with a lot of college faculty. We all go through our training, get our doctorate in our field, and then suddenly we're thrown into a classroom without much training in that area of pedagogy. Um, and like many faculty, I was always a straight A student. And I found that not all of my students approached my class in the way that maybe I had as a student. And so I started exploring in different ways um, how to help students find ways to be successful without dumbing down the class. Um, and a lot of the things I learned through the ETE program here at USU by attending the various seminars and clinics and workshops and per other professional development opportunities. I also taught Connections, which is the first year experience class. And a lot of the resources they provide to instructors there help me learn more about the experiences common to our freshmen here at USU, what level they're coming in at, and the resources available on campus, not only for my professional development as a faculty member, but also resources that I could offer to students. And so with those, um, that information in hand, I started applying and adapting my freshman level course, which is World Music, Music 1190, um, and incorporating a lot of these strategies and trying to find what worked, what didn't work, not only with instructional design in mind, but also my own personal philosophy and approach to teaching. And I've come away with a lot of information and things that worked or didn't work for me um, that I was hoping to share. And the impetus for um, creating this seminar and the reason I'm here today um, talking to you about this is because I took a course offered through ETE called um, Effective Online Teaching Practices. And it was offered through ETE at, for USU faculty, but it's actually sponsored by AQ, which is the Association of College and University Educators. This was an online course that I took last year during the 2000 to 2020 to 2021 school year. Um, and even though my classes were only temporarily online because of the COVID-19 pandemic, I found so many strategies that I was able to implement from the course that I took into both my online and in-person courses. So at the conclusion of that class that I took, I was excited to share my takeaways and what I've learned with my colleagues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Lauren. That sounds great. And can you maybe share with us also specific challenges that you, you noticed in your students? Like what about uh, college preparation did you find um, they struggle with that you want to address? Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of things that are common to many freshmen. Certainly not all. Many come in very well prepared for college. Um, but I think these challenges that certain students face have only been amplified by the pandemic. Some of those challenges include personal accountability, being able to show up for class, um, follow through on commitments like turning things in on time, but also things that are common to many entry-level students like 
you're assigned a paper or a large scale project. And in high school, you'd have a lot of stepping stone deadlines, like you know, write your outline first, do some peer editing, do your first draft, more peer editing, right? And all of these stepping stones along the way towards success on the final project. And that's something that we less commonly find at the collegiate level. And um, so I think one of the, some of the challenges that students face, in addition to personal accountability, are just this feeling of overwhelm. How do I study for an exam that's worth 30% of my grade? Or how do I work on this paper when there's no intermediate deadlines? And suddenly, the paper deadline's next week and I haven't even started. So um, a lot of these kinds of college readiness skills. And I think here in Utah, having such a variety of backgrounds that students are from, some went to co top college prep academy type programs, and others are from extremely rural um, backgrounds where you know, maybe they haven't had the opportunities that other students have. And really finding ways to equalize the classroom experience so that students from all different backgrounds can be successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can relate to that. I work primarily with uh, international students mm -hmm. and immigrant students here at USU. And yeah, I can definitely relate to most of the things you mentioned. And so how we can work with this? What strategies? work based on your research and your uh, preparation and just experience? I kind of broke down um, the strategies that I found to work into three main categories. So the first is the way that we organize our courses can be done thinking of student success first. And that doesn't mean that we're removing content necessarily, but just thinking of ways to, to build a structure. So that's the first way, and I, I broke that down further into three subcategories. One is having a consistent structure. So things like each module, each week, or even each unit, if you're not going in a weekly structure, has some similarities. Students know what to expect in terms of homework, in terms of maybe topics that will be covered in a similar way in each unit, um, types of assessment or you know exams or projects, how much homework or reading. All of these things can be consistent in a way that helps students know what to expect, plan ahead, and, and build those college strategies. The second way you can organize things is help students connect with the syllabus. The syllabus is a scary document for a lot of our mm -hmm. uh, new students and something maybe they haven't encountered in the past. So finding ways for students to engage with it early in the semester, but also revisit the policies and procedures at other times so students learn to differentiate uh, between different courses and aren't caught unawares when, wait, you, have a, you allow me to submit late work, this faculty member doesn't, I didn't realize that there might be differences between different classes. So connecting with the syllabus and then creating community in the class. A lot of our new students may not know other people in their class or in their um, major cohort, and that can be a very isolating experience for them and disincentivizes engagement with our curriculum. And so all three of these elements of organizing your class can help contribute to student success. And the other two elements that I found were assessment, specifically exams and other types of um, test structures. And the third is other types of assignments like projects and presentations and papers. So those are the three main topics that I found that we can adjust in our course to allow for student success. Mm -hmm. And did you notice any difference in your student like um, challenges or how they approach that based on your implementation? Yeah, there's a few different things that I've done. So um, as an example of creating community, mm -hmm. um, I really strive to learn every student's name. Obviously, that's not possible in mm -hmm. classes with like hundreds of students in them. Yeah. But even up to 50 students, I found it possible to memorize all students' names. And I've gotten a lot of feedback from students that that makes them feel more accountable mm -hmm. to showing up to class, makes them feel more valued personally. So feedback maybe doesn't feel so impersonal and harsh. It feels more like I'm speaking to them as an individual. And also doing some small scale assignments, maybe just for a completion grade, um, in-class group work things. Students begin to know, get to know the other students in the class and feel accountable to them. They have that community. They have a student they can ask for notes if they're absent. Um, it just builds a better student experience overall. One um, thing in terms of assessment that I've implemented in my classes, I used to do multiple choice 
exams. Mm -hmm. So then I figured, okay, it's pretty basic. Do they understand the knowledge or the content or not? Um, and recently I moved away from that because I feel like that can be a really um, stressful test taking environment. And that's not to say that we need to remove all stress mm -hmm. because you know part of being an adult is finding ways to deal with difficult situations. But um, I've moved towards a testing structure where students are able to just share facts or ideas that they took away from the unit. So I can still grade them by saying, yes, this is correct, yes, this, or no, this is not correct. So the grading is not overwhelming, but it allows students to really parse the facts that they learn and share what their takeaways are. What are they going to remember from my class five years down the road? How does it matter in their own lives or their own careers? Um, whether or not those relate to the field that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Those are just a couple of the strategies that I've found to be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then um, maybe if our audience or me <laughs> or anyone <laughs> uh, wants to know more about these approaches, can you recommend anything like, I don't know, resources, books, anything online we can use? Absolutely. I found, you know, I don't have one specific source that's been the most helpful other than this course that I took through AQ, that's spelled A-C-U-E, mm -hmm. and that course is open through an application process to all USU faculty. So I would highly recommend taking that course. Um, it's an online class, it's like the full um, academic year, and it, it was a few hours of work per week, but it was really worth it in terms of payoff in my experience, and I think Many others I talked to had a similar um, positive outcome from that course. And I would say here at USU, we're really lucky to have the ETE program, the Empowering Teaching Excellence. And I found so many great resources through their website and other activities that they put on. So I'd highly recommend for USU faculty to be involved in that. Um, if you're watching my seminar video, um, I have on the end of my PowerPoint, a number of other resources that may be of interest. Those are mostly things that, um, things that I've implemented and the books that those were found in or places where you could find similar or complementary approaches. So I'll leave you to look to the last slide there for some more very specific resources. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can look forward <laughs> to that part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Lauren. And I want to end with a question, of course, I want to ask you as a researcher, do you plan to do anything else other than the podcast and the seminar? I don't know if you want to publish or present more on this topic. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure yet. Um, I'm focused on like, you know, the preparation for this at this mm -hmm. point. I'd be interested in it. Uh, I think there's more um, research to be done on this topic, certainly. I'm just sharing my own personal experiences and, you know, things I've, I've found in conversation with colleagues or from reading, um, taking this course. Um, but I, I mean, I think there's a lot of great resources out there and, and maybe there's some more I can add to that. I don't, I don't know specifically yet, but we'll see. Yes. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. It was great to learn from you. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me today. Thanks for being here.